live and subscribe button. Go live. We're live. We live. Good afternoon and welcome to our Friday afternoon live stream. Whoop whoop. I don't know what that was. <laughs> We're so excited. We are. You can clearly see this in yes. our faces. It's been, it's, been, it's been a wild week, I will tell you that. Yeah, so they came out and uh, all those boxes, they have to come into the shop, be unpacked. Then everyone needs to be, know, you know, who needs to know? They need to be told your camera's coming. Then we ship it all. Yeah. And, that takes and, time. And plus, and plus part exchanges and normal day-to-day -day shop stuff. And then looking at all of your images so that we can determine what to share with you today, which yeah. was a challenge in itself, honestly. It's tough. But it made our day, I think. Mm. It kind of took our mind off of all this logistics side of things of Nikon Z8 release. Yes, we, we were obviously weren't going to be able to get through the whole live stream without saying the word Z8. Sorry about that. Um, but I hope that for those of you that don't want Z8 news, you're happy to know that we have some pictures to share with you today. So this was a tough challenge for some of our viewers, I think. It took them out of the element. Yeah, for sure. It, it was definitely a pull you out of your comfort zone for those who don't do street photography. And I think... Although we're immensely grateful for every single submission that we got, and there were a lot of them. Um, you can see who who has done it before and who hasn't. Mm. And it's just those little details. Um, there were also a few people, Con mentioned to me as he was going through the pictures, he said uh, a few people said they don't have a street nearby them, so they took a picture of a landscape and sent that over. We're not going to show those shots. Um, we love you. <laughs> we really do. But we're, we're trying to keep it with the amount of shots that we got. We're trying to keep it to the, to the rules, you know? Exactly, yeah. We, like, if we haven't shown you images, um, don't blame us. You know, first of all, there was a lot of images. A lot. Uh, the bar was high. Yeah. So everyone got in. But yeah, we had to exclude. There were some beautiful images of dogs, uh, which it was pain for me to remove them from the list. But we had to do this. Anyway, we did enjoy them, though. Yeah. We immensely. Did. Even the doggo ones that we couldn't share. Uh, we have to say a big thank you to Jeremy for your contribution. Thank to you, Jeremy. The fund is open. Oh, um, yes. I will also say it's coming up towards the end of the month and I am preparing my next article for Nick on Owner Magazine. What's it going to be? Uh, I'm not telling you. You have oh. to subscribe to find out. But if you are not a subscriber and you would like to be, there is a link in the description box for you. And I have, for the first four subscribers from the live stream, I have a special something. Yeah, feeling yes. generous? It's a it's a Nikon baseball cap. I don't have one because I've only got four of them, so I'm not going to wear one and then tarnish it for whoever you first four subscribers are. I've but got two, but I can't give you one. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Charming. They're for different days. <laughs> one is for church day and another one is... Um... For every other day. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, so if you would like to subscribe, then you can click that link below and, uh, as I say, first four subscribers will get a baseball cap as well. So um, that's my plug for today. I don't go to church. <laughs> I'm not a church man. <laughs> not a church going person. No. Uh, thank you also to Jean for your contribution. Thank to you, Jean. Uh, to David Dixon. Thank you, David. And to Terry, who said, hi, both. It's great to see you thank both you, Terry. on Monday. It was lovely to see you too, Terry. We really appreciated it. We had uh, a Z8 in-store day on Monday and uh, with Bruno Marari, mm -hmm. who is a Nikon trainer absolutely fantastic day it was he was busy yeah. from first thing in the morning till the last thing very nice chap really really lovely um if we can he's doing a whole road show all over the uk so if we can um extract him and keep him for another day we certainly will just to answer dave walker who said uh work stopped me going along to the z8 demo will you be doing any more events um we will we will definitely try and in the meantime Yes. We've tested it a little bit ourselves. Oh, yes, we did. We actually had a great shoot um, yesterday with uh, one of our viewers from New Jersey, United States. Yeah. So that was cool. Yeah. He came here. We didn't go to New Jersey, but that would be fun. Yeah. Um, so that was good. I, I guess we're going to get a demo camera at some point once kind of the stock stabilizes a little bit as well. So maybe you will be able just to come into the shop and try any time convenient uh, to you. But do give us a call first because obviously we don't know when that's going to happen. That's right. Um, also, have to say thank you to Fred for your contribution thank you, Fred. to the Coffee Fund. And David said, I was visiting Charleston um, 
SC. Where's that? South Carolina. What's the sh what's SC? Uh, short I thought FC like football club. No SC. South Carolina. Sounds I assume good. it's yeah. South Carolina. Um, that goes to show our American geography for you. The well, <laughs> I could say South California, but it doesn't exist. <laughs> I said the, the it's a Republic of California <laughs> right. with a bear on its flag. <laughs> the challenge helped make me more comfortable with doing street. It led to some fun images, definitely better than I submitted for the challenge. Well, I'm really glad that 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 the fact that there had been a challenge beforehand got you to the point where you were able to do some street photography. That's true. And our idea is obviously you're welcome to submit any images to the challenge, but our idea is we want you to come out and take those shots, whatever the topic of the challenge is, you know. So, and yeah, if it takes you out of the comfort zone, that's, it's a good way of learning things, you know. And uh, yeah, if you, you know, obviously as photographers, we've got thousands of images of every single topic, but if you manage to get one, in between the challenge, then that's probably the best kind of images. That's what we want to show to you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, thank you to Brock for your contribution you, to the Coffee Fund as well. Um, and South Carolina, Fred mm -hmm. corrected me. Thank you. Which is great. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Jeremy, unfortunately, the baseball caps are not for sale. So we get these specially from Nikon. And once they run out, they run out. But they, we can't sell them because that's not what they're for. We can, however... Gift them to new subscribers. I know you're already a subscriber, so that makes things a little bit difficult. Just like um, Nikon Z9, it's been out of stock for years. But if you... <laughs> it's slightly less price, different price point to a Z9. Um, maybe you can tag on another year to your subscription or something. But anyway, use the link because the link is what will we'll tell the folks at Nikon owner that it came from the stream, which is the all important thing. Um, okay, so... I am going to attempt to share my screen. All right. And I'm going to be on the emails, emails yeah? Can you first go over to our stream? I don't know how far behind you are. Yeah, no, not good that question. far behind. Okay, good. good so I'm going to switch over here because this is a screen share mm. um, option here. So hopefully with picture in picture. Oh, look, look picture that. in picture. And there's no color cards this time. Yes, because we're streaming from my MacBook Pro instead of from my... Uh, Windows PC. <laughs> you know those Windows PC. They just can't get the color right. <laughs> it's really weird. Anyway. No, so it was some sort of profile you had set some, up in there. Something so. going on. It was a gaming profile that I couldn't get off and I don't even use Yeah, it. but he's gaming too much. Yeah, that's it. All those 120 hertz refresh rates <laughs> so, for the first person shooters. It's for Modern Warfare 2. Yeah. It's Call of Duty all the way. <laughs> Not even a little yeah. bit. Okay. Um, so the first shot is by Alan Washburn. So I need okay. you to concentrate right, let me, now. Okay, let me find Alan. So. Um, and that's the thing. That's Can't the find that you one. You have to type in the search bar. Oh. oh, I know why. Because it's here. Yes, that's right. And what did he tell me? So what did he say? I love this shot, first of all. There's something yeah. very jolly about it. Well, it was taken in Salou, Spain. I saw the wall a few days earlier and thought that would make an interesting background with a right-looking person walking by. I had to wait all where now before this chap came by and thought he was the closest. And I can see, yeah, the, the, you know, the red swim trunks, I think, kind of add to those kind of yellows on the wall, so which is yeah. quite good. Yeah. And I was taking with Z6 24 to 120 lens, which is a really nice lens, at ISO 100 at f6.3. There you go. That was a really nice combination, I think. All right, next up we have Albert Eschendahl. Now, these are alphabetical by first name because that's how we organize them when we try and look through the images. So if you want to be first on the list, change your name. <laughs> change your name to the beginning with an A. Uh, so what did Albert say about this shot? Well, first of all, I want to thank Albert that he is single-handedly keeping the film alive because this shot was taken on Kodak Portra 400 on Nikon SP with 51.4 lens. I if I can... Oh, I zoomed in a bit too much. So then. 31st of March, 2023, which is good. That that's technically qualifies. Yeah. You know. Um and it's in Amsterdam. Um so of the new underwater bicycle storage entrance slash exit at Central Station, I guess the central train station. It's really cool actually, because I haven't seen anything like this in town. Um, it's, and I like the, the sort of the leading lines of it as well. I think that he's done a really nice job there. I accidentally zoomed in. I apologize. So if you had a little moment where it zoomed in for you, everything that I see on my screen, you see as well. <laughs> okay. Next up, we have this beautiful shot by Amit Molina. Amit sent us a few shots, yes. but this um, is my favorite, I think. I agree. It's always hard to choose when people send us. Please don't send us multiple shots if you can help it. It makes our lives so much harder. That's true. That's um, true. But uh, I think that this was my favorite of the set. What did Amit say? He didn't say much, but 
All I can see is uh, D850 35 millimeter. Well, ISO 6400. I don't think this one is particularly taken with 6400. It's probably under other shot, but uh, I guess yeah, it was taken with D50 camera. I, I think from yeah from the four shots he sent us, this is my definitely my favorite one. Yeah, there's something very I don't know quite atmospheric about this shot and the fact that you've got this incredible silhouette as well. Um, against the like the the silhouette alone is so expressive mm. which i think was really really clever yeah and it's kind of tells us also about the kind of the place it was taken so you know yeah yeah, yeah. Exactly. somewhere in the middle east i guess i would imagine so um okay so then we have baxter uh baxter is a reg yeah. regular contributor to yeah. our challenges hey, this is one of the top spots in our humor section <laughs> of the street life challenge I think this is really cool. I like the fact that the chat, whether he was a dancer or a street performer or um, a protester, or I don't know what was going on there, but his socks match his converses. Yeah, he's uh, he's holding a pole, so whatever that means, but I think he is voting with his feet. I think so too. What yeah. did, um, did Baxter have anything to say about how this shot was taken? So D700 with 7200, 2.8 at 180. Uh, da -da -da. So he says, well, he tends to use D3. The D700 is the one he kind of uses for outings. Makes yeah, sense because yeah. of the size of it. So exactly. Thank you very much, Baxter, thank for you. sending that over. All right. Uh, then we have Bobby. Yes. Yes. This I, is a really fun I love this shot, shot. Isn't I love it? this shot. I think it's uh, it's just, it's the, it's the vibe yeah. more than anything else. Uh, obviously, people are quite, you know, like it's a party people they have to be photographed uh to the time. let me just see that is fashion shop girls posing at Grahamstown essay so it's south alberta <laughs> am i just making up the name i don't know essay what, what's this essay states um in in, in, in the in, united states i should brush up on my american um state i only know ny abbreviation so yeah, ny is an easy you know. one uh anyway this is an amazing shot i think uh, i think it's just kind of sh like the atmosphere it's i can definitely see the vibe in this shot yeah for sure so thank you bobby for that one we love it all thank right you. next up we have brian so brian leeming yes again, let me find brian producer. yeah i like it this one's interesting because i it almost looks like it was posed do you know mm. what i mean like with the words in the background i have a feeling that he found this spot and then he really waited for that moment to Wait, come in, Unle up. unless it's his friends who are posing. And he was just like, go, yeah. off you go, go, because yeah. I want to take this picture. But I love, so for those of you who maybe can't see that on the screen because it's a bit smaller, it says much needed tender loving care on the back. And um, and obviously that's quite appropriate with the with the lovely couple that are there in the foreground. So I think that was well, well positioned. Mm -hmm. uh, did he People think it's actually Graham Town. It's uh, SA could be South Africa, but... <laughs> I'm not sure. Graham's Graham Town or Graham Town sounds American, if you ask me, but yeah. I could be wrong. Um, what were the what did Brian use for this shot? So that was in South Bank. I know exactly where those stairs uh, are, the yeah. yellow stairs. I, I have a shot. shot. Yeah, I have a shot of that as well. So and uh, what does he say? So that's uh, D7000, 17 millimeter f5, one hundredth of a second, ISO one hundred and sixty. There we go. All right. I'm just going to switch for a second back to the comments so that I can uh, keep an eyeball on you all to make sure that uh, we haven't missed anyone. Joy said, I recognize the shot, Brian. So maybe <laughs> she's seen it somewhere before. Yeah. I mean, it says that the previous shot of the lady standing on the bank of the river, that's from Israel. Ah, yeah. yes, I did wonder if yeah. it was Israel based on the other shots that Amit sent. And David um, says, uh, David Lewis says, I say South Africa, potentially. It could be South Africa. Could be, could well, be, yeah. Yes, that's correct. There is no SA state. All right, so there's no, no South Albert. <laughs> South Albuquerque. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> now, listen, if we challenged you on all the British counties and their abbreviations, would you know them? Quite no. a few places, yeah. <laughs> there's quite a few. Um, I have to say thank you to Vince for your contribution thank to the you Coffee very much, Fund Vince. as well. He said, not ready for street, so I'm working up some alleyway photos, which is just fine. Um, I think a few of our... Oh, Brian said he didn't know the couple. So that was a Here we go. opportune moment. So I assume you were waiting for them then. Unless you were passing by and you saw them and like, oh, yeah. You know, and then it's... it was like just a... You know, moment Timing. thinking, you know, yeah, absolutely, Fantastic. on the spot. It's interesting how um, how sometimes those street moments happen completely spontaneously. Yeah. Yeah. And other times, 
Um, as in the case with Alan's first shot, he had to wait because he wanted that shot and he really had to wait for the people to turn up. And it's, I think that's one thing about a lot of photography, but most definitely with street photography, you can't necessarily predict what shots you're going to get yeah. on the day. Well, if you listen to street photographers who do it on pretty much daily basis, there are two ways of doing it. You go around and if you see something, you take it. Or you wait on a particular corner, let's say, on a spot mm. and wait for things to happen. Yeah. So there's two ways of doing that. And, you know, like that could be anything. Yeah. Yeah, exactly that. Um, so the other thing, uh, AP, <laughs> Chuck says, I only know Berwick upon Tweed. Well, that's good. <laughs> It's a very specific location to know. But uh, as I say, please excuse us if our geography is rubbish. Yeah, um, we should probably tour United States at some point. We should, then we'll yeah. know all the abbreviations. Yeah, do you think we can uh, fill up a Madison Square Garden? I don't think so. Probably not. But we might be able to go and just like um, crash on the sofas yeah. of all our different viewers across the state. Maybe a tiny pub right next to Madison Square Garden. <laughs> yeah, tiny, tiny little Or probably island. Queens, probably. Yeah. You know, it's cheaper. <laughs> no, or Brooklyn. You know. um, thank you Seth for being here for briefly Thanks, um, Seth. who has he's gone now gone to work but uh, gone with the wind but thank you very much for joining us briefly all right so let's go back to who we got here so next shot I wonder if I can put us in a different corner I'm going to put us in that corner. yeah let's do that so this is Charles Ashton and uh this was shot at golden hour this is a lovely use of a number of things it's a great use of the light of backlighting and yes. um, fantastic use of um, perspective and leading lines. I really like this one. What did um, Charles say? Um, well, he only shared um, the camera and the lens he used. So it was a Z7 Mark II with a 1424 lens. Okay. I'm interested. I wonder where he was when he shot this, but I don't recognize the location. But, uh, but anyway, I think it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, so thank, I agree. You, thank you very much for that. Uh, then we have, thinking about it now, here we go, Christopher Ulford. Um, and this is a little boy playing with bubbles in a park. And this is a very, very cute, kind of almost whimsical mm -hmm. shot, this one. What does he say about this? Well, uh, it was that same, which 24, 72.8. And, oh. uh, you know, and he just cropped a little bit. Yeah. You know, so yeah. uh, again, it's a matter of uh, kind of capturing the moment while you're there, I guess, you exactly. know, and, and it's a wonderful moment of childhood, really, isn't it? It is. I went deep, but, and that... you know, it's the moment that he will never remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, but some, might remember. some of we talk about, like, say, kind of children play, you know, and these moments where we kind of never relieve because we become older and become more serious and yeah. something like this. So, so I think it's kind of a nice capture that's showing that moment. It is. Um, so that was that one. Then we have uh, David Bushfield. This is after the rain in Xi'an. I think that's how you pronounce yeah. it. In China. Very glowy. Yeah. Yeah. So this is D824 to 85, 3.5 to 4.5 G, which is uh, a bit of a classic lens, yeah. that one. And as, as you say, like you, you, like a part of obviously Chinese character and everything, but like, yeah, you, like the, the, when you see this type of shots, yeah, it's either China or Hong Kong or Tokyo per se, you know, because yeah. of the, all those kind of neon, neon uh, bright uh, lights and obviously the rain because it's so wet, you got those beautiful reflections from the asphalt. Yes, exactly. We love a bit of reflections in puddles. Uh, then we have David Cruz. I love this shot. I think yep. it's, again, we've got this glow, very clever use of the lighting. Again, thank you, David, who is single-handedly as well, uh, is keeping the film alive. I respect <laughs> that. Everyone who shoot on film is going to be mentioned. That's right. You get a special yeah. mention if you shoot exactly. on film. Exactly. <laughs> There's no bias here. Absolutely not. But they will be <laughs> mentioned. Yeah. Uh, but no, I really, I, I enjoy the show. I like yeah. the composition of it. I like Everyone needs to know their heroes, I think, you know. <laughs> Everyone does. That's right. Um, I don't know what this was shot with. It was shot with a 5 and 50 millimeter f1.8 G lens um, with Kodak Ultramax 400. It's in downtown yeah. LA. And you can see the Ultramax by all those kind of yellows and oranges mm, there. Lovely. Yeah. I love it. Um, it's much easier to see, by the way. You, you're not getting the full impression of it on my little screen here, but um, it is phenomenal. I mean, if you're looking at full screen, you'll get some idea, but it is pretty amazing. Okay, then we have this. This is a great shot. This is by David Mascaro. Yeah, this, I, I feel judged already. This this shot, I feel, should be called Greta is watching you. Yes, <laughs> Big Greta is watching. That's right. You know. it, is, it is 
oddly sinister in a way, but it is very interesting. And also the fact you've got the the dad pushing the push chair there, like in kind of front and center, but then you've got that. That makes the shot is those two kind of almost points of interest, I think. Exactly. And David is also keeping the film alive because it was shot on HP5 with his a, uh, Nikon F2 AS camera and 105 AIS lens. Amazing. There we go. 105. Huh? Yeah. My faves. And that's why you get all that lovely. You know, you see the layers in that shot. You see yes. the layers of you've got the the subject in the foreground, which is the dad walking with the push chair. You've got the building behind him. You've got the trees. Yeah. You've got the cars. You've even got a person right in the very far distance there. And all of that is made possible with the one. That's true. And I see Greta. I want to do better. Like, it's just as simple as that. <laughs> Every time I see person. her, I want to do better. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Just exactly. want to be better. Okay. Then we have Dixon. So Dixon sent us a few shots. Um, we picked this one. This was actually the first one, I think. The first one, yeah. So that it was, a was nice set. To yeah, be honest, it was a really nice, almost like, uh, not not montage is not the word I'm looking for, but it was almost like they were a complete set. But here we picked the first one. What did Dixon shoot with? All right, so it was in San Francisco, I guess Chinatown, uh, April 2023, which is good. That's recent. <laughs> uh, well and, exactly, and then bubble uh, pur. Oh, actually. Can CX one hundred F here with Acre simulation? Okay, I shot with black and white converted D six hundred. Oh, interesting. Okay, with thirty five and twenty four AFD lenses. Now okay, that's, that's interesting. I wonder if by converting the camera to a black and white camera and then using D lenses, you do almost get this filmic look. Mm. Like more. I wasn't entirely convinced that was a digital photo when I first saw it. I kind of know, like, you I don't know, I, 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 I genuinely can see uh, the digital photo. Like, I, like yeah. sometimes, obviously, people try to put filters on grain and things like this. But uh, I think when you look at the shots, they, uh, but obviously, you don't see the grain. And no. uh, I think because the image looks so clean, <laughs> uh, like, yeah, if you would shoot actually on the Acros 100, uh, which is Fujifilm black and white stock, it's actually quite famous for this type of grain. So. Oh. Basically, no grain. It's yeah. very fine grain. Yeah. Uh, you know, but yeah, with digital shots, it's for me, like I would say 90% of the time, I can say it's a digital shot. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So thank you, Dixon, for that. Thank then you. then we have Fred. This is quite fun. Um, it was taken during the challenge, it was taken in May, because uh, I've got the date imprint there. So yes, in, uh, on the 5th of May of 2023. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that's good. Um, where. Where is it? Well, it, it looked like a baseball match. I realize Could that. be wrong on that, but, you know. Um, <laughs> it's not our national I don't know if they play sport. basketball on the grass, but, um, you know. Um, <laughs> anyone's watching NBA finals playoffs right now? I'm just, you know. <laughs> it's crazy. You see? You Good. see? I know things. Um, <laughs> Do you? Uh, is Michael Jordan still playing? I'm <laughs> kidding. So. Um, so, yeah, it looks like a, a nice kind of interaction of a fan with a mascot. Yeah, I think, I don't know if this is a fan or who it is, but it is quite a fun shot. And I yeah. like the the mascot kind of makes that picture. Yeah. And I think. I think the colors, because they kind of like, you know, they're like really kind of vivid colors. I think it suits this type of uh, picture because obviously you've got green grass and then you've got blues and reds at the back as well, which mm -hmm. pop quite well, I think, for this type of shot. Mm -hmm. What did he use for it? Do you know? Uh, well, we actually had a discussion. So uh, he used Z7 and 24 to 120. Mm -hmm. And he didn't use his Z9 because I remember when we talked about taking cameras to the stadium. Yes. And I was saying that, yeah, like Z9 is probably, you know, they won't let you in. So what Did Fred decided to do is like, yeah, I'm like, no, no, I've just, you know, I'm going to take a smaller camera. That's and it made sense. He took those shots, you know, 24 to 120. You know, you don't need to bring a big, big lens for this type of shots as well. No. You know. That's actually very impressive and managed to get in with a Z7 II. That's not too bad. Mm. What is the name of the stadium, did he say? No. Uh, I can see it says Phyllis. So I guess it's, it's somewhere in Philadelphia. Uh, boo, boo, boo. Let's see. Yes, baseball game in Philadelphia. Ah, yeah. well, there you go. Thank you for that, Fred. I'm just going to quickly check the comments while we're here. Um, so Andy said, looks like running the bases at a minor league baseball game. Uh, that's the Philly bird. Okay, so it is a bird that looks like grass. <laughs> it's the mascot of the Phillies baseball yeah. team. You know, I've, I lived in New York for four months and I never went to any game. Okay. NHL, NBA, baseball, you know, so none of, them. none of them. And that's one of the things that I kind of regret. Yeah. You know, so maybe next time. 
you know, going to go see Nick's game. Uh, Roy asks if baseball is as boring as cricket. Um, I think that that offended two nations at the same time. Well, Roy is Australian as well, so, you know, <laughs> well, that's his game. Cricket thing. is, yeah, cricket uh, is true, actually. Cricket, I... Personally, I don't have the patience for it, but I don't have a huge understanding of baseball. I have a little understanding of baseball because my husband is Venezuelan and believe it or not, their national sport is baseball. So he's a massive baseball fan, but I just don't know enough about yeah, it. Yeah, I know the cricket game can last for days. That's what I know. Yeah. Like it can take several days, one, yeah. one game. Yes. You know? So I guess if you're at the stadium, you might want to bring a tent. But and if you want to start the pot with games, what is better, rugby or American football? That is the question, oh, probably similar to pineapple on the pizza, question. yes or no? Yes to pineapple on pizza, uh, no. <laughs> but no, no to American football. <laughs> oh, let's start a fight. Well, American football, if you obviously, it depends where you live. Like, yeah. you know, obviously, like if you live in Ireland, there's rugby or Gaelic football as well. Yes, but you see, that's I, another thing. I, what's Gaelic football? I don't know much. Oh. I just have quite a few Irish friends who play that. Wow. And, uh, and well, they're in Ireland, so I've never been there. So, right. Yeah, I mean, on the game. So, you know, <laughs> been to Ireland. I don't know. I'm I'm a simple, I'm a football girl. I, it's really simple. I don't really enjoy it. You see how nice it is to talk about sports or pineapple on the pizza and not talk about that age, <laughs> you know. Anyway, speaking of, thank you very much to Nick for your contribution thank to you, the Nick. Coffee Fund. He said thanks for such informative streams, Becky yeah. and Con. Looking forward to the Z8. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Yeah. When some of you tell us you need to be on topic, we like to enjoy our conversation with us and with you guys. And it could be anything. Just so you know. Um, yes, exactly. Mostly photography. Mostly, we try and keep it uh, topical. Exactly. <laughs> if we can. But uh, don't judge us if we, you know, run for about 20 minutes about something unrelated. Um, so... <laughs> I don't want to get into a sports debate, but I think I've started a riot in the comments. Um, Seth said that he'd... Uh, he said... Oh, he's got, I've got lost him. Here we go. He said, if we come to New York, he'll get us a spot when, when we're there. So we should do that. Sounds good. Sounds good. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> anyway okay we're going to move on to the next shot now once it loads i'm going to switch over so you don't have to look at a spinning ball of nothing go on there we go all right so so do we have gary lawson we have gary lawson now Z7 mark 2 24 to 120 at 40 mil iso 80 i just wanted to particularly bring this one up because this is one of those things this is called a free little library and I have not seen one in the UK, but I assume that they have them. Well, at, you know, on this, like at the this stations. One's in Bermondsey. Yeah, I mean, Bermondsey is a cool place, by the way. So um, it's uh, it's changed over the years. Oh. But 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 um, I have a little kind of a free book library at my station. Yeah, we have actually at our station we have a kind of windowsill where people just put their books and then other yeah. people take books and it's not as fancy as this but i love the free little library concept yeah um because it it just gives people an opportunity whether they can't afford to buy brand new books because in some particularly in the states and australia they had oz prices of books like 25 dollars australian dollars for a book yeah but like uh, one australian dollar is like 10 Cents or something, <laughs> American sense. It, they're still expensive. That's for you, Roy. <laughs> Just um, kidding, okay? But but it is. Um one of those things where I think that reading should be free for everyone and it's so nice to just have that yeah. there. I also think money should be free for everyone yeah. who wants it as well. Completely. You know. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, don't throw away your books, definitely. If no. you can dispose of them, you know, in a way that you give it to someone who can read it and get the knowledge, mm -hmm. I think it's yeah, definitely worth having. Exactly. Obviously there are charity shops, but if there is a way for you to deposit them in, in a method that is going to be free for the recipient. I mean, Neil Gaiman wrote this whole article about how he would he would be happy if people stole his books from libraries or just stole books from libraries or from random places because it encourages reading and that's the most important thing. So anyway. And reading is good. And reading is good. For some of us who can read, <laughs> not me clearly. Gary but, said, know. do they have, I uh, wonder if they have my book. Probably not, but uh, if you see one in the wild, I've had a few people who've seen my books, people reading them on trains and stuff like that. You can always snap a picture and send it to me on Instagram because um, I love that stuff. Yeah, there's a campaign going on. It's called Stock Becky's Book in Your Local Library. So you're welcome to participate. Yeah, that. And the local Waterstones. Yeah. I've had a few people say, oh, they're stocking it in my local Waterstones. Or Barnes and Nobles or of Barnes the world, Nobles, you know. Yeah. 
available on there too. Anyway, moving swiftly on. So now we have Jeff Henson um, and we are loading again. I'm not quite sure why we're loading for so long today. Not sure, not the sure. Thing. The internet, someone again opened the taps. <laughs> Someone's yeah. using it. Um, so this is Jeff's, this is actually... Another one of those like neon yeah. sign. This was where was it? That was from Tokyo, Japan. Mm -hmm. Z50 wheel trucks, 13 millimeter, 1.4 ISO 500. So obviously you open up the aperture so much that you can shoot that ISO 500. Love it. And obviously lots of light as well. Lots and lots of light, but also it's not, you haven't lost the detail by having the ISO too high. So it's got that sweet spot because it's been shot at 1.4. Mm, I love Tokyo. I've um, been twice. Mm. We'll definitely go probably a couple more times for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, excellent. So thank you, Jeff, for that. Thank you. Really appreciate it. This one is from Hassan. Uh, and this is very This is great. This is a great shot. This is kind of like an almost like a reportage documentary style shot. Yep. Um, what did Hassan say? Good question. Let's have a look. Okay. And I've lost Hassan. Let's see if I can. Okay, let's see. We will work on getting the details for you. Please wait while we try to. Yeah, are you going to have the spinning wheel? <laughs> I could. I'm sorry, I've lost Hassan. But it might be because the search didn't uh, work. His email address is something different. Yes. And then you can't just search for his name because that does happen. That, doesn't it? That's exactly what happened. Okay, yeah. we'll come back to that one. But it's a great shot. So thank you if you're watching. Here we go. I found oh, Hassan. You got it. Perfect. So Z62, uh, 2470 F4, fantastic kit. You know, you don't need anything else. And it says, um, I took it uh, on the railway station during the Eid, festival. Eid festi festival where people were traveling with their family. The two homeless boys were chilling on the standing train. They don't have any place to go. This is the place they belong to. There so you go. It's a, it tells a sad story. Yeah. Yeah, but it's really, it's a, it's a fantastic shot. So thank you very much for yeah. that. And, and so, you know, street photography sometimes can tell a story, can tell, you know, about the area as well yeah you know so um it's a moment of life but it also tells in this case a quite sad story exactly yeah. um next one up we have is ian willard who sent this shot over uh, this was a late submission and we appreciate that he took the time to send it over because this was a film shot yeah uh, he took it in 1971 in wow. march so you know and uh, he knew about this challenge <laughs> you know, about 40 years in advance he did say he can't get out and about to do these challenges now unfortunately but i think that this was i don't know there was something i felt like i was in there with with these protesters at this very moment in time i like the fashion of the time as mm -hmm. well and obviously they're protesting towards certain thing that hopefully we have now uh, well i don't know i think it was a maggie out yeah it was a margaret thatcher ah. opposition but she's not. Well, she's out that. now, technically. So, yes. Uh, so, they <laughs> won at the end. Exactly. You know. Um, and what did he shoot with? Let's Nikon have a F. Look. Nikon F Atomic T. So, probably with a 200 millimeter F4. Nice. And also, he had 35 F2.8 on him as well That's on the same day. And Ilford HP4. HP4. That's before HP5 came out. It's Can you imagine that? Absolute classic. Like, I, I've never seen HP4 in my life. I've seen FP4. But not HP. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know that one of those chaps was one of his friends as well. Um, okay. Next up, we have Jeffrey Gibbs. This is an interesting one. I like the way, I like almost like the moment when the the chap on the right-hand side has turned his back and the woman's sort of like observing out the window. I think that one is from Cuba. Yeah, that would make sense. What does Jeffrey say? No. It's I'm wrong. It's taken in Brazilian city of Rio Branco, ah. located in the Amazon rainforest. And we don't know what it was shot with. Unfortunately, not. Well, anyway, great shot. So thank you, Jeffrey, for that one. Thank you. Okay. Next up, we have John Cross, and it's going to load. Now, this, it came through quite downsized, so I'm going to see if I can just expand it. There you go. That kind of fills the frame a bit. So this was an East Friday. Uh, taken at the mystery pro mystery procession in Trapani, Sicily. Oh wow! And do we know what it was shot with? No, we don't. No, but uh, I assume if it's an Easter, they're carrying something. So, yes, I would assume so. I don't know what the traditions necessarily are during uh, Easter celebrations in Italy, but 
it looks like they were whatever they were doing, they were having fun. Something religious, I assume. Yes, I would imagine so. Not okay. the Easter rabbits. No, no no Easter bunnies for them. No. I don't I think that's quite a British thing, you know, <laughs> the Easter Is it? bunny thing. I don't know, maybe in the States as well they have yeah. Easter bunnies. Yeah, but I like the faces of those chaps. They are really having a good time there. It's, and speaking of people having a good time, this is a lovely shot by John Cumberland. I know that this was taken sort of either post or mid lockdown when we had friends social distancing and meeting up but they were all having a good giggle and yeah. i think it's wonderful well i think i hope john just came over to them and said it's actually two meters distance <laughs> so you're not you're actually not following that rule you know i hope he didn't say that oh lockdown had ended he said note how carefully they had to social distance in bushy park yeah um i, I mean we, we laugh at that we laugh about it now like when the time passed we weren't but, laughing about it then. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, so that was taken on his everyday Z50 and 50 to 250, which is a very good walkabout, mm -hmm. actually great walkabout kit. Um, this one is by John Fogarty. John sent two shots. The other one, we, we were really hard pushed to pick a shot here because the other one's very vibrant and colourful, but I liked the um, composition of this one and this just the, the sheer amount of stuff on this truck. Yeah, so that was in Palermo with his D850 and 1735 lens, which is actually a really mm. good lens for street photography and reportage style photography. Uh, shot at 60th of a second, ISO 80, so F11. Wow. So obviously he wants to get everything sharp. Yeah. Um, for people who think you can't get away at 60th of a second, well, you clearly can. Obviously. But yeah. everyone is different, so do try it first yeah uh but yeah we, like we had two shots there and uh, we had a hard time choosing one we did and i think that this one would have worked w well whether it was color or black and white as well which i liked i liked the fact that it was quite a versatile <laughs> shot um sometimes still only half the viewers have hit the like button thank you for pointing that out that's great. <laughs> I appreciate that. If you haven't hit the like button, please do. We are up to Keith Sandercock. Uh, mm -hmm. What did Keith say about this shot? I like this. Good question. Some Let's chaps having, having a discussion, having a coffee and a chin wag. Something, something so nice about these shots is, is the representation quite often of, of how people interact with each other. That's true. And I really, I like this one very much. So when Con has found... Any minute now. Any minute now, Con will find the email. No. Just put an elevator music on. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I'm going to get a copyright strike for singing something. That I'm not no, unfortunately, say. I can't find Keith. Okay. Sorry, Keith. Um, I'm going to switch back to comments for a minute just so that I can see what's going on because yeah. uh, I'm staring blind yeah, here let's at see the what moment. People are up to, you know? Um, so, Keith, if you're in the chat, let us know what you shot with because we don't have your email, sadly. Um, well, we do. I just, <laughs> I'm not there yet, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, David said, I can't afford to put you two up in the Ritz Carlson but I will be your driver to safer parts in San Francisco and Northern Carolina. Um, thank you. Well, we will we will make a plan for the great American tour. Yes. The grand tour. The grand race. The Grace grand tour. Uh, thank you to Chris for your contribution. Thank you, Chris. To the Coffee Fund. And um, let's see if there were any. Andy said we have your books at the library. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very, very happy about that. Um, David says, by the way, David Roberts says, by the way, on my recent trip, the Z7 2 24120 combo was a stellar travel combo i think that that is becoming like the real um perfect combination perfect pairing i note that as we didn't realize that nikon were going to do a z8 24 120 kit but they've obviously come to the same realization as us that the 24 120 is actually a really great lens to bundle with these with these pro bodies so really glad of that um okay so yeah con is lost in the email sorry email, keith yeah going through and i can't seem to uh, find it next time um okay so wayne says so first of all thank you very much wayne for the thank contribution you, to the coffee fund he says hi this is a holiday weekend here in the united states memorial day weekend so for those of you celebrating that holiday weekend happy memorial day weekend yeah stock market is closed 
Right. For right. us investors. <laughs> this inspires me to get some camera use this weekend. Yes. Yay for barbecue. Yay. This is like the American barbecue weekend. Barbecue. Well, yeah, well, we have a bank holiday here on Monday as well. So we do. definitely barbecue is it's gonna kind happen. of on the list, absolutely. Uh, and thank you to Randall as well. Who thank says, you, Randall. Does it matter what picture ratio you take your pictures? Example, uh, one by one or three to two ratio or 16 by nine ratio or full sensor. I don't know that it necessarily, it depends for you, I think. Yeah. As an artist, you decide that. Uh, everyone has their own preferences. Yeah. I generally like uh, the ratio of, uh, you know, six by seven medium format. So I don't know what that is. Um, four by five ratio, more or less, you know, so I like that. I like it's more of a square type of shot, you know, so, yeah. but it's not, not exactly square. It's, it's not, not a hustle by six by six. No, uh, it's you not know, the Instagram OG square. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then, you know, uh, I, like I had a hard, hard time kind of going back to 35 mil after medium format because obviously the image is much wider. Yeah. And then you have to kind of wire your brain to take slightly different shots. You do. You know, you have to think. Of, of how the shot's going to look in a, in a completely different format. Yeah. Very much so. Um, okay, so... Nord India, I tried to use search function. He did, yeah. I've, um, I can witness I have it. basic skills <laughs> of basic. control F and search, yeah. Um, <laughs> can, he can search for things, it just didn't come up. No. Uh, sorry, it says, David says, Northern California. North Carolina is 3,000 miles from me. The problem is, because my laptop is plugged in, everything is much smaller on the screen, so I actually... I'm really struggling to read what it says. The ATEM resized <laughs> the resolution. Yeah. Without getting my face sort of like in the laptop. Sometimes when I'm editing our videos, my kids, because I tell my kids, you know, like, get your face back, get your face back. And they're like, mom. And I'm going like this because I'm trying to see. Exactly. And I'm, I have perfect vision. It's just sometimes I need to be in fully immersed mm. in the screen. Um, but this is actually just quite difficult because the resolution is much lower when I'm sharing my screen. So we are going to move over once it has loaded. We've got about 15 minutes. Hopefully we can get through the rest of these. Mm -hmm. So this is by Michael Melia. And this, I think, is in Venice, although I'm just guessing. It looks like, yeah, somewhere in Italy, highly likely Venice. The yeah. Venice, one of the Venice festivals. The Red Rebels from Extinction Rebellion's Climate Protest in Parliament Square. I couldn't have been more wrong. So I shot with the Z6 and 24 to 200. Wow, I had no idea. Those guys can dress up. Yes, they can. Okay, next we have Mike Langley, um, which is loading, 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 but maybe you can find it. I like that one. Great shot. Yes, classic shot. This is cl very classic. Like it, this shot could be taken in the 60s and 20s, you know, yeah. you, you name it. It is pretty timeless. What does Mike say? Taken in Spain, uh, in space. Taken in Spain with Nikon D500 and 7300 full frame lens. Yeah, it's called Call to Prayers. Yeah, great name, great name for the shot. Well done, Mike. That was lovely. Thank you. Then we have Nick. I think Nick sent us two shots. We had a tough time picking which one, and we chose well, this one. We had the option, obviously, with people looking at the phones, or which is more of a kind of classic kind of city shot. Too, uh, I think this one was from. Iranian elections. Mm. Uh, let me just find that. Uh, we got Z6 24. Z6 2 24 72.8. No, different one. That's a problem with several shots, you see. Uh, so we don't know which one was the first one or the second one. No, but uh, if it was the first one, then it was taken in 2010 on a D700 and 24. Here we go. That's it. Ah. So this is a D700 shot. Yeah, I like this type of shots. They show the moments and the emotions of the time. Yeah. Uh, and which got is a bit of movement in there. Exactly. Well, which is really great. So exactly. More dynamic. And the fact that you've got this incredible starburst behind us. Really well put together shot. Next, we have Nick Steidel. Um, Nick sent also a couple of shots. I like this one because there's actually quite a lot to see in this shot. Um, and you probably don't realize at first look, you don't realize how much, but you've got the chap in the the coffee shop or the cafe behind the glass there's a little bit going on you've got reflections there so you know that he's on yeah. the street then you've got the graffiti uh so it's a juxtaposition that's really interesting yeah i know this word that's yeah. great it's good it's great word yeah good word so i was waiting to say this word for whole stream i think someone was taken on a Leica. Oh. yeah 
looked like M240 and the Sumilux 35mm lens. No, And it's actually, you know what? It's taken in speeder fields on the commercial mm. street. So, yeah. Oh, it's great, Nick. Thank you very much for sending that Great over. Leica as well. Nice camera. <laughs> okay. I think M240 Leica is still considered to be the one that has a CCD sensor, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, really? And that's why people rave about it. because I like the colors. The CCD has a different color rendition to, C for, to CMOS sensor. And I think that's why people tend to gravitate towards M240 over, let's say, something like... No, did they have M10 after that? You're on Nikon live stream, by the way. So, you know. Um, <laughs> if you hadn't guessed, next we have Olivia. Yes, let's find Olivia and the skateboarder, right? Yes, that's right. So, it's taken with a D7100. Yeah, was it? The black flip, flick, flick, uh, 360 flick. I don't even know if it is. Is he just trying to stomp? Because, it's, the because he's already got one foot on the ground. It's actually quite hard to tell. But I like the shadow. I like the use of the shadows there. Um, and the fact that it kind of looks like he's looking at the shadow. Anyway, very, very clever capturing of motion. Apart from 7100, does... No, wrong. Scroll. There we go. Uh, 18 to 200 lens. There we go. 18 to 200 um, at the full extension of the, the lens. So to 300 mil equivalent there. Mm. So that's fantastic. All right, next up. Yeah, so it was Iraqi elections in Manchester, Nick said. Yeah. Iraqi elections in Manchester. And obviously they won, according like. Like, if I would look at this shot, like, he was happy, that guy. I would imagine so. Yeah. Um, okay, next up we have Paul Parsonson. Um, and Paul shot a picture of a Hanoi barber. And I love this. Again, this is like, you know, human interaction moment here. Yeah. Um, and I, I like what he's done with the place, you know. He made <laughs> yeah. it very cosy. I love the fact that it's not sort of like one of those inter interior barbers. You just turn up, guy's got the mirror on the wall. Just Put your bag on the hook yeah. and you're ready to go. And also you can see the barber's reflection in the mirror. Yeah, I like that. So thank you, Paul, for sending that over. Uh, then we have Pavel. Um, so Pavel sent two shots. Both of them were amazing, yeah. truly amazing. We had a hard time picking which love one those. to send over. Uh, we picked this one and I love it. In the yeah. rain, couple in the rain. Light reflections, you name it. Yeah, It's got all the elements of a great... Uh, street shot. Absolutely. What, what did uh, Pavel shoot with? Well, he just decided to, you know, for the shots to speak to them for themselves. But uh, <laughs> yes. it was a rainy night in Philadelphia, and he used H5 1.8 S lens on both of them. Nice, excellent. So thank you very much for sending those over. Then thank we you. have Peter Jackson. Mm -hmm. um, so Peter here, if you, it might be quite hard to see on your screen, but actually, if you look hard enough, you can see that there is a lady in the distance. If you follow there. the road. If you follow the lines, the leading yeah. lines. Don't turn to the left straight away, just follow the road. <laughs> and this was shot in Essex. Yeah. I would say it could be Richmond as well. It's true. It's yeah. actually one of those nice little streets or even Hampstead or anywhere like that. And you know, it was taken with a Z9 and H5 1.2 S lens. Nice oh. and compact setup for street photography. Okay. Yeah. Wow. 85 1.2. This is our first submission to any challenge with an 85 1.2. Mm. Uh, what are your thoughts on H5 1.2? We, we tried one yesterday, finally. I like it. Yeah. I will give you more more thoughts when I've had a proper yeah. chance. Will you give me £3,000? Um, I, I wish I had the money for it. It's a big lens. But um, when I was looking at our shots at the end of the day yesterday, I could not fault a single one of those shots. Mm. Everything was sharp. You know what I mean? It was that like, helps. Everything yeah. was perfect. The focus was perfect. Everything was where it needed to be. I just, yeah, can't justify three thousand pounds. This was Fair by enough. Peter Norton. This shot that we're looking at. Yes, let's I think find Peter, Peter sent us some shots that weren't, um, that didn't have people in them. So we picked yeah. this one of all of them. So they were all streets. Yeah, they were capturing the murals on the on the walls. Mm -hmm. um, but we decided to use the one with a person in it. Mm -hmm. And obviously, he's a uh, guy in a fish. Yes. I mean, this is a bit gruesome, so I'm sorry yeah. if you're vegetarian or vegan. Um, I agree. And, uh, I, I apologize for that. Don't know what Peter used for these shots, but um, could have been Z9. Or it could, could have been if it was current, potentially. So that's that one. Then we have Rafa. Um, now... Yeah, Rafa. We did, he, Rafa said that's a set of three, and he said, well, those shots have kind of been represented as a set. And unfortunately, we... 
We had to choose one yeah. because we can't bend the rules. <laughs> we are a very high institution of photography and the rules are rules. The rules are the rules. Unless it's a photo of a dog, of course. But uh, <laughs> even this, this time... We didn't even have the dog. Exactly. So we had to choose one, Ralph, unfortunately. Forgive us for that. So we chose this one of a lady in the park. Um, honestly, it looks almost infrared-like. That looks almost like... What was Grey's favourite movie? Um... Uh, Blow up. Yes, Did looks that. almost like a blow up. That's interesting. She's about to get murdered. <laughs> oh, I hope not. Okay, next we have Richard Angeloni. This is a subway shot. It's black and white. It's yeah. got the train coming. See the whole sounds like New York, and it's N line. <laughs> and you know this stuff. Nick and line clearly. Um, excellent. Then we have. Did Ri is this shot with film? Richard's shot. Good question. Let me find. Kind of relax a little bit. Uh, yeah, you Let's there. find him. Here we go. Let's see. <laughs> it kind of relaxed a bit. Yes, <laughs> Kodak Triax. Uh -oh. uh, the first shot last year was a New York City subway. This shot was Z50. Okay. Oh, okay. And then converted he to a profile. He used them Triax. Okay. Okay, that's interesting because it does kind of have that gritty, gritty look, doesn't it? Um, anyway, so that was shot on a Z50. Excellent. Next up, we have Richard Dong. This is... Uh, interesting because it's so wide angle. You've got some interesting distortion there, and the guy's shadow looks massive. Yeah. Um, the other shot that Richard sent over was also very good, um, but we picked this one just because the other yeah. one was a bit more architectural yeah. than anything else. I mean, speaking of the shots taken on digital camera and film camera, if you've taken the shot with film camera, you wouldn't be able to recover shadows as much as on this shot you would do with digital. So that's one of the maybe benefits yeah. for these type of shots of digital or film. Obviously, there's other benefits and things like this and artistic choice. But for this particular shot, yeah, it would be a hard time recovering those shadow details if it was shot on film. There you go. What did he shoot with? Does he say? Yes. Uh, Nikon ZFC. It's called Workers on Break. And it was with 10 to 20 lens at 11.5 millimeter focal distance. There you go. Nice wide shot there. Okay, then we have Richard Roberts. Um, this is nice. This is called Please Smile. Um, as something quite... I don't know, heartwarming about this picture. It's a, like one of my favorite shots um, of this stream. Um, it's got an interesting story behind it. He says it was taken with a Z15, 16, 50 lens at 50 millimeter, F16, 20 of a second, Sunset Beach, San Francisco. A candid shot of a grandmother and her son. I talked with them afterwards and sent them this picture. A grandmother, a mother and son. So you've got three generations yes. in that shot. It's amazing. Um, and it tells the story, even without knowing this, it tells yeah. the story. You, you can see how um, the, you know, um, the grandkid is calling his grandmother, yeah. basically, you know, yeah. and uh, she's touching the water. Yeah, I, like, it's very heartwarming shot. Yes, it's lovely. Yeah. Okay, good. Then we have Rob Arameo. So this is someone working for a place called Top Dog, I assume. Some nice. Top Dog. In the University of California. Beautiful fry up. <laughs> you Not know. sausages there. Um, D500 with the 20mm f1.8 lens. He said, street is definitely out of my comfort zone. Much more comfortable with wildlife. Well, you did just fine here, Rob. So thank you for that. Uh, then we have another Rob. We have Robert Forcadilla or Forcadilla. Um, this is cool. I, I don't know where this is, but I love the street, the pavement. Sort of mosaic. This, re like a really good homage for Henri Cartier Brisson mm -hmm. shots of the stairs going down. I think it's a cyclist. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a classic shot. I'm sure uh, most of you saw that shot. And it's kind of a homage to that, in my opinion. Yeah, and I like the the harsh shadows. I think that worked really well. That was shot with the Z62 and the 2875 mil lens. So a nice versatile one. Uh, <laughs> this one is yeah shall we call it the dude robert wallace or bob wallace yeah uh and where was this one taken uh ba -ba -ba. i asked this person if it was okay to take his picture and he did ask why and i explained i like the saying on this on the shirt so yeah so it was taken with z6 uh, uh massachusetts province town Z6 and 2470 2.8. There you go. All right. It's always good if you're going to take a head-on shot of someone to ask their permission. Um, it reminds me of Big Lebowski in a way, this, this shot, you know. <laughs> this one is by Simon Firmston. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, I have to zoom in a little bit to just give you guys, because so that you can see. Oh, it's going over. <laughs> but there's so much detail in this shot when you actually zoom in. So when you're looking at it, 
in this format. You don't necessarily see all that detail. This is the city of Xi'an. Yeah. So I guess in one of the temples, yeah. Mm -hmm, in China. Um, anyway, I think this is lovely. And I like the, just the, the use of framing with the arches there as well. So like a frame and a frame and a frame mm -hmm. and a frame, yeah. Exactly. So thank you, Simon, for that. Uh, then we have Simon Littlejohn here. This was post... I think it's coronation. It's a coronation weekend, weekend celebration. There, this is really kind of a Martin Parr style shot. Yeah, you know? yes, it is. That's exactly I, I, like it's. This shot doesn't have a aesthetical beauty, but it tells a story and it shows the environment. Yeah. of a typical British household. Yeah. So I think it's it's kind of tells that story, and it's for me this is kind of a street, but more of a documentary style shot. So sort of, well, I think we should yeah. do a documentary of its own. You know, documentary photography in its own. You genre. should start your own project shoot for five years and then present us your <laughs> photographs. <laughs> then we have Steve Rapid. Uh, so this one that looks what? Venice. Yeah, it is Venice. Oh, yeah, okay. I've you know if you've been to Venice, that that's like literally there's a street that looks like this. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is that street. <laughs> like there are streets with canals and there are streets that look like this. Yeah, basically. pretty so much. It's basically one street and the whole thing. The rest are canals. Mm -hmm. uh, but that one was taken with their thirties and sixteen to fifty kit. Again, nice, a very portable setup. Nice. Street so photography so. and travel. Okay, good. And then we have Stuart Bain. I think this was your favorite shot. This is my favorite way. shot. Um, I think if I would give it a place, that would be a first place for me. And it's just so much going on on this shot. And it's kind of comes through. You almost need to like savor it like a fine whiskey or wine. Yes. Because there's so many layers to the shot. And obviously, from position of people on the street to a moving train at the back and obviously the person at the front you know trying to kiss another person yeah there's a lot of things are going on and it's a hay market station i think it's in much if i'm not mistaken yeah uh, right. but to me this kind of um, gives this kind of documentary feel of classic magnum style photographs uh, Ma magnum agency style photographs yes exactly no it's really it's really interesting you can look at every time you look at it you see something new yeah for, for me this is yeah the, this is probably it like, from personal opinion, he is my favorite, yeah. Okay. Okay, then we have Suraj. This is nice use of silhouettes mm -hmm. here. This is a great shot as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, lovely use of what little light there was. What did Suraj use for this one? Good question. Let's find out. So that was a Z6 with 70 to 200 2.8 lens. Oh, interesting. Okay, good. It's a California street in San Francisco. I was going to say, it looks we, like it's San Francisco. <laughs> we didn't know the street name, but now we know. <laughs> so we know which street it was. This one is from Terry Allen. Terry, uh, thank you very much for sending this one over. I recognize this spot. Yeah. Or is it uh, Whitechapel? <laughs> um, yeah, Piccadilly Circus. Of course. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you were being sarcastic. Sarcastic. Ah, I beg your pardon. It's probably the, yeah, if you've never been to London, you'll probably see Piccadilly Circus photograph anyway. And it's obviously the, the famous stage of... Uh, Eros, Eros? Uh, yeah, Eros, Eros or yeah. however you pronounce it. Uh, D750 with 24120. Thank you, Terry. Uh, next, we have Tom Lawrence. This is cute. I mean, this is maybe not your traditional street photo, um, but it was very, it's very patriotic. It's Coronation Weekend, you know. <laughs> yeah. We celebrate this weekend because it kept our economy going, you know, so... Um, that's why so many photos were taken of it. I guess so. And that was shot with Z62 and... Lights, Portugal, color plan, 90 millimeter f2.5 projector lens. So uh, you got to adapt that thing to fit Z6. So yeah. he's done that. There you go. And those projector lenses, they also have re really, really interesting rendering. And obviously you can see that in a blur, in a bokeh. Yeah, you can. That, And also in the colors, because that was my yeah. spot. Was mm -hmm. It was taken with something a bit different. Uh, this is from Vince Klein. So this is lovely, actually. I mean, it's quite heavily saturated um and that sky is very very moody looking but i like the fact that your attention is drawn to the street art yeah. there on the wall i mean it's a clever bit of editing as well obviously I, it's edited this way that our attention kind of brings our attention to that uh, painting yeah mm -hmm. um then we have vince philpot vince here's yours so vince sent us a few shots again really tough to choose actually on this one but in terms of a kind of traditional vietnamese shot we went for this one um but all of them were great so thank you very very much thank for that much. nice use of the negative space there as well i thought on that one um and composition uh then we have will conran i think this is the only shot that we got away that we were like okay it's not it's, it's not, not the street but it's, it's in the street it's kind of in that nature <laughs> yeah you know 
Yeah, exactly. Um, and then I believe this is our last one. This is Eves. So Eves again sent a few shots. It's a, also quite difficult for you to see here. But if I zoom quite in a little, a little bit, there's a lot of detail going on here. There's people having a drink at the Duke of Kendall pub. You've got the color, the lights. Um, and this was shot. What was it shot with? Good question. Well, um, I know Eves had the Z6. Yeah. I think you uh, might be right. I think it might have been the Z6. Let's have a look. I think it was an email from me. It was an email from you. <laughs> That's what it is. Okay, let's let's just find it. It's fine. It's you're not going to find it. <laughs> not not. No, the thing is, yeah. If you send it to media, if you send your files to media, great. Always means then go straight to me. That's right. If Becky has to forward me emails, then I can't find. The, the this person the emails uh sorry Eves. um <laughs> but we know you shot it with a nick on and we know where it was so that's the main thing thank you everyone who sent us over the, their shots obviously we couldn't include anyone we had over i think 150 submissions yep um so that was a small selection we've already run over by a couple of minutes so there you go um but it is definitely appreciated that you took the time to to get yourselves out to do the challenge to send them over to us and uh we will do another challenge won't we yes what is the next challenge becky um well <laughs> i think i think we should do macro as our next challenge not because i'm biased uh so please send all your photographs uh, straight to becky no, don't do that send them to media Please also do actually send them to media at gracewestminster.co.uk. Um, no larger than 10 megabytes, no overcropping or anything. Yeah, necessary. let's do one image. It just it saves our time. Um, it's, it, it takes ages to go through all the images. And we, we appreciate your photos, but uh, um, let's just follow. It makes it very yeah, hard. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So let's just do one short. You choose your best. Um, and then, yeah, it's just um, going to be much easier. Put your name as well. Yeah. So we know who it came from. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, I've uh, I might submit my flower <laughs> photography. You should, but put it under like an alias, yes. and then I won't know, and then I'll say that's rubbish. No, I'm just kidding. Also, I can't stand with a C, <laughs> and uh... <laughs> go from there. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm really, really pleased with every. I hope that you've all enjoyed this little kind of not even critique se session, but sort of yeah. like this viewing of pictures session for this afternoon um, or this evening or this morning, depending on where you are in the world. And Nick said, everyone send Becky 20 macro shots. Don't do that. I will automatically disqualify you. <laughs> You're fired. Uh, but yeah, some of you who go to Z9 or Z8, you know, yeah. Z8 probably, you know, just recently it's freshly delivered by your local courier. Open it up, put a macro lens on it. Get out, take some shots. Exactly. If you've got other cameras on there, they also apparently take pictures and they're great pictures. They're great cameras, you know, so you can also take those shots and send them to us. Ideally, we want to see something that's been created from the day this change was announced, which is yeah. today, which is 26. So you can send us all shots, but if you kind of, you know, got out and took the shots like now then it would be even better the idea is to get you out and about taking pictures as much as possible that's what we want is we want people to to maybe they have to step out of their comfort zone like you with it with flowers well um, i do it all the time now it's uh, <laughs> it comes a second nature a muscle memory <laughs> automatically you go straight for the flowers now you just beeline for them um the email address is media at graysofwestminster.co.uk i've put it in the in the chat there so you can see it um one picture no more than 10 megabytes please because otherwise the inbox will just actually just spit it back at you and let you send it um and then we will have probably the last weekend of june so whatever yeah. the whatever the day is but basically the last friday of june that's uh, going to be the showcase some, something around there um and otherwise thank you to everyone today who's contributed to the coffee fund i think i missed no i caught everyone's coffee fund contributions i think so if i missed you i'm really sorry but i i think i've managed to capture anyone and everyone um, we will see you next week, one way or the other. Yeah. You, you're going to have a post-birthday live stream. <laughs> Sounds like post-mortem. I don't know. It's... Uh, I, almost just after your birthday. In between my gardening. Mm-hmm. Looking after flowers. Doing some macro. That's what you're going to do. Then we're going to celebrate. And Exactly. We don't know what we're going to talk about. Probably not Z8. Something else. Yeah. Um... Z8 Mark II. 
<laughs> anyway, have a great weekend all. Have a lovely week ahead. Uh, for those of you who are celebrating, whether it's Memorial Day or the bank holiday weekend in the UK, have a great time or any other celebrations. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.